Dear Josie, it's been years since we had anything but the most sketchy communication. I've long since owed you an account of the destiny of your cat, and here we go. The cat, after your leaving him, seemed not certain of his character or his place, and we changed his name to Delmore, which immediately made him more vivid. <laughs> the first sign of his vividness came when he dumped a load in a Kleenex box <laughs> while I was suffering from a cold. <laughs> During a paroxysm of sneezing, I grabbed for the Kleenex. <laughs> I shall not overlook my own failures in this tale, but when I got the cat poop off my face <laughs> and the ceiling, I took Delmore to the kitchen door and drop-kicked him into the clothes yard. <laughs> this was an intolerable cruelty, and I have not yet been forgiven. He is not a forgiving cat. The next eventfulness it came on Thanksgiving. When the family had gathered for dinner uh, and I was about to carve the turkey, uh, there came a strangling noise from the bathroom. I found Delmore sitting in the toilet, neck deep in cold water. I got him out and, and dried him with towels, but there was no forgiveness. <laughs> Shortly after Christmas, a Hollywood writer and his wife came to lunch. My usual salutation to Delmore is, up yours. And when the lady heard me say this, she scorned me and gathered Delmore to her breasts. Delmore, in a flash, started to unscrew her right eyeball. <laughs> and the lady, trying to separate herself from Delmore, lost a big piece of an Italian dress she was wearing, which Mary said cost $250. This was not held against Delmore, and a few days later, when we had a skating party, uh, I urged Delmore to come to the pond with us. He seemed pleased uh, and frisked along like a family-loving cat, but at that moment, uh, a little wind uh, came from the northeast and spilled the snow off a hemlock onto Delmore. He, he gave me a dirty look, went back to the house, and dumped another load in the Kleenex box. Uh, <laughs> this time he got the cleaning woman, and they remain unfriendly. Uh, well, th this is not meant to be a, a rancorous account. Uh, Delmore contributes a dynamic to all our relationships. People who dislike me uh, go directly to his side, and he is thus a peacemaker. <laughs> he loves to play with toilet paper. He does not like catnip mice. He does not kill songbirds. In the spring, the rabbits chase him around the lawn, but they leave after the lettuce has been eaten, and he has the terrace pretty much to himself. He is very fat these days, and his step sounds more like that of a barefoot middle-aged man on his way to the toilet than the settling in of a winter fog. But he has his role, and we all respect it. And here endeth my report on Delmore the Cat. Best, John. <laughs>